Okay, so I think uh, I am online at the moment. Uh, I think you can probably see me, uh, and I know that people are joining. I do apologise, I'm late. Uh, I cannot see myself, so uh, I do hope that uh, this is coming through. Um, it tells me that uh, uh, my camera is not being allowed to be seen at the moment, and I can see, but I've just checked on my iPad, and uh, it seems as if people are actually joining. Um, and it seems as if, as long as the cat doesn't stay on there, um, I hope it does seem as if things are working, albeit rather haphazardly. I'm not sure the connection is, is very good, so I do apologise for that. Uh, I can see, see people's comments as well, so I'm going to plough on anyway and hope for the best. I hope this finds you well in good heart and in good spirits. I hope you've uh, had a, 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 hope you had a good day yesterday and uh, I hope that uh, you've got things planned for today. Not quite so nippy today, uh, much milder uh, today. Uh, I was opening the wind I was opening the curtains this morning expecting to see a little bit of frost because it was cold when I went to bed last night but um, it was very damp still a bit chilly but not as chilly as yesterday I hope you have the liturgy in front of you for this um, Thursday no it's not Thursday it's Friday Friday the uh, uh, 3rd of December. Now if you bear with me a second I'm going to go and get my book. Uh, uh. Because today we uh, recall, uh, we remember somebody tomorrow collection of people tomorrow. T today it's uh, Francis Xavier, Xavier, missionary apostle of the Indies from 1552. Born in the castle of Xavier near Sanguisa in Spain in 1506, Francis Xavier was son of an aristocratic Basque family. He was educated at the University of Paris where he met Ignatius Loyola. Xavier was one of the group of six who joined with Ignatius Loyola in 1534. He was ordained priest in Venice in 1537 when the Society of Jesus was founded in 1540. Xavier was its first secretary. At the invitation of the King of Portugal to evangelize the East Indies, Xavier made, way, made his way to the Portuguese enclave of Goa in India, where, which, which became his base. After preaching with great success in Goa for five months, he moved south through India to Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, where he is said to have made tens of thousands of converts. In 1545, Xavier left India for Malacca, where he travelled down the Malay, Pen Pen Malay Peninsula on the Molucca, Molucca Islands, founding Christian communities as he travelled and preached. He was the first to note a problem that was to bedevil the work of missionaries in the following centuries as well as his own, the oppression, exploitation and unchristian lifestyles of Europeans were amongst the biggest obstacles that the missionaries had to overcome and made their task, especially when indigenous, indigenous people assumed that all white people were Christians, so very much harder. After a trip to Goa, he sailed for Japan and landed at Kagoshima in 1547, 1549. Sorry. He studied the Japanese language for a year and then preached in many, in many of the principal cities for two and a half years. By 1551, when he left Japan, he had established a vigorous Christian community 
that was to remain faith that was to remain faithful in the time of persecution. His next target was China, to gain entrance to that country. Then, then close to foreigners, he persuaded the Portuguese authorities to send an embassy, of which he would be a member, to the Christ Chinese Empire. Emperor, excuse me. The, the embassy left Goa in 1552, but got no farther than M Malacca. Xavier continued alone, arriving at Sankian, a small island near Macau, in 1552. There he died on the 3rd of December that same year, after repeated vain attempts to reach the mainland. His body was returned to Goa for burial. Francis Xavier died at the early age of 46, yet in his short life he proved to be one of the most effective missionaries of all time. Though the official Jesuit figure of 700,000 conversions at, the hands of Xavier, at Xavier's hands is no doubt an exaggeration, it gives some idea of the sheer scale of his work, and if Xavier's achievements are a tribute to his total commitment to mission work, they also indicate the success of his strategy, in which he sought in each area he visited to target those groups, children in South India, local rulers in Japan, most likely to be receptive to the gospel to give it a foothold in the indigenous culture and to propagate it within their communities. Francis Xavier, or Javier. Uh, I believe Swindon has the um, highest population of people from Goa, outside Goa. Certainly did a couple of years ago. And uh, They are faithful members of the, particularly the uh, Catholic churches around the town. What I thought was particularly interesting in, in reading that biography was that there was a recognition that the behaviour of those um, coming from Europe did not match the teachings of the gospel and became a great obstacle. And as we read uh, about um, exploits of those um, colonial powers claiming to uh, be Christian uh, did not match up to the teachings. Javier though must have had some kind of uh, integrity in, in what he was doing in order to establish uh, establish the mission wherever he went. Pippa is being most difficult today, I have to say. We turn to our liturgy. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we might behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be praise and glory for ever. In your tender compassion the dawn from on high is breaking upon us, to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The earth is the Lord's, and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he founded it upon the seas, and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, or who can raise, rise up in his holy place? 
those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol, nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a just reward from the God, from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your head, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors. The King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 25 Psalm 25 Remember, Lord, your compassion and love. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let, not, let none who look to you be put to shame, but let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. Make me know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you have I hoped all the day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore shall he teach sinners in the new way sorry, in the way. He will guide the humble in doing right and teach his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to those who keep his covenant and testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, be merciful to my sin, for it is great. Who are those who fear the Lord? Them will he teach in the way that they should choose. Their soul shall dwell at ease, and their offspring shall inherit the land. The hidden purpose of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am alone and brought very low. The sorrows of my heart have increased. O oh, bring me out of my distress. Look upon my adversity and misery and forgive all my sin. Look upon my enemies, for they are many, and they bear a violent hatred against me. O oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have put my trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for my hope has been in you. Deliver Israel, O God, out of his troubles. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love. Let us pray. Free us, God of mercy, from all that keeps us from you. 
relieve the misery of the anxious and the ashamed and fill us with the hope of peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. If you wish to read the Old Testament reading today, it's from Isaiah, Isaiah 29, verses 1 to 14. Isaiah um, 29, verses 1 to 14. Time to move on to our canticle. And I'm going to choose a different one today. Let's have a look. Just pressed song number 30, a song of God's herald. Also words from Isaiah. God will flee his, excuse me, let me try that again and get the words correct. God will feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. Go up to a high mountain, herald of good, good tidings to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, herald of good tidings to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. God will feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. He will, th he will carry them in his breast and gently lead those that are young. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. God will feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. We now have a reading from Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 to 43. There must be a pattern in there somewhere, but I can't find it at the moment. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, the, and then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, The enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want to, us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest, and at the harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, and then bind them in bundles to be burned, and gather the wheat into my barn. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable he told them nothing. This was to fill what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels, just as the weeds are collected and burned up with the fire, 
so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all, all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was reading now, I was really thinking of Francis Xavier and how he went and sowed God's seed. Um, and amongst all those that he sowed the seeds, there were those um, there were those challenges of the hypocrisy of the behavior of of the um, invaders I suppose those who were not leading righteous and just lives but still God's kingdom grew in those places where Xavier preached and taught and encouraged and that work produced great fruit going to read if I can find it there we go Stephen Cottrell's thoughts on this these words of Jesus are extremely beautiful and somewhat irritating he teaches us in stories just stories nothing else and as we discovered yesterday's st yesterday stories can have more than one meaning to understand the story, you have to get inside it. There is rarely a simple takeaway message, only a come down and chew it over invitation to dinner. What's more, Jesus tumbles one story upon another, showing us that God's kingdom can be seen and known from many different angles. Advent is a time for us to consider what the church calls the last things, death, judgment, heaven and hell, eternal life. These parables give us pictures and stories of what eternal life in God's kingdom is like. They invite us to see God's kingdom breaking in around us now, like yeast leavening the dough, or growing among us from tiny beginnings like mustard seeds. Most challenging of all, Jesus tells us that the weeds and the wheat grow up alongside each other, I think we know this. We know that there is good and evil in our world. We know that the world is not divided up into angels and demons, only frail beings, excuse me, frail, only frail human beings with a great capacity for good and a terrible capacity to get it wrong. We get ready for judgment by acknowledging this reality and asking for God's mercy not pretending that we are just wheat. We have this collect. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now it is time to awake out of sleep. For the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. 
for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Song of Zechariah Look towards the east, O Jerusalem, and see the glory that is coming from God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Look towards the east, O Jerusalem, and see the glory that is coming from God. Sorry, my page disappeared for a second now. Come to our time of intercession, our time of prayer. Um, find a page. Pippa, but you still can't read. We have these prayers from uh, John Pritchard. And this is, these prayers are for, particularly for Advent. So let us pray. Lord, prepare us for your Advent coming. In our prayers today, we try to come to you, sure that you will come the rest of the way. Lord, prepare us for your coming in the church. Clear out the unnecessary clutter of our church life, the piles of dead habits, the cupboards full of prejudice, the cobwebs of compromise, and the sad rotor of forgotten dreams. Open our church to the free flow of your refreshing spirit. Give to our church, our community, to your church, Lord, and to each of those places where your church gathers together a new, revitalised vision and hope. We yearn to belong to you, Lord. And Lord, we pray this day for the things that are coming up in future weeks. We pray, dear Lord, for the various carol services and concerts, gatherings, services. Pray for Christingle um, Saturday scene coming up. Pray for the gathering at Meadowcroft. We pray for our Sunday services. We pray for the carol services and the 
crib services and the uh, events that were all being held. We pray for each other in our lives. That at this time we might point to your coming and to the hope that that offers everybody. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, prepare us for your coming in the world. Come, drive away despair from our politics. Revive our dreams of justice. Restore our passion for what is good, right and true. Establish your just and gentle rule in places where there is conflict or threat. Pray for Syria and Yemen. Pray for Ukraine and Belarus. Azerbaijan and Armenia. Pray for Ethiopia. We pray for places where peace has been powerless and violent people have had their day. Set a flame to fuse to the fuse of justice. Where arrogant people have defied the moral order year after year. Guard well the new springtime of hope where peace has come like a gift, wrapped in reconciliation and gladness. In particular, Lord, we long for this, healing and peace at this time of pandemic. We pray for a just, right and healthy world. We pray for an end to all of this suffering. And we particularly pray for those places that continue to struggle against the pressures of this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, prepare us for your coming in our community, in the problems of our locality, Help us never to forget the supremacy of your love. May love motivate our care for our neighbourhoods. May love heal the social ills which drag us into despair. May love inspire our citizenship to rise beyond mediocrity. in a moment of quiet you might like to name in your minds the problems that you know locally which you're aware of we pray that in our communities, in our neighbourhoods, we pray that love, gracious and practical, your love will find a way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, prepare us for your coming 
in those in need. Give us eyes to search the face of the stranger and there to see the face of the Saviour. Give us sensitivity to hear the doubts and hesitation and there with that person to share the confusion and the futility. There are those, there are those that we know who are ill right now struggling this morning to handle the pain that they feel in their bodies or in their hearts. We pray for them. For you to come to us in them. And to ask for our love. And you ask for our, sorry, let us pray for them. For you come to us in them and you ask for our love. We give you that now as we name them and love them in our hearts. And I will name some of those places, sorry, some of those people out loud. Mark, Addy, William, Pauline, Jill, Linda, Stuart, Beryl, Eunice, George, Bob, John, Mary, Jordan, Mary, Wendy, John, Janet, Annette, Jim, Joe and the family, John, Liz, Dave and the family, Daniel, Peter, Alvin and their family, Shane, Tilly, Jan's family, Linda and her family, Chris, Anna, Mary, Avril, Martina and Traudel and their family, Andy, Anne, Sarah, Nicholas, Martin, Jeff and Hilary, Tom, Esme, Nilvan family, Len, Peter and Bridget, Ken, Rose, Barbara, Sylvia, Gwen, Greg, Stephanie and their family, Josie, Angie, Anne, Angela, Ali and Mia, Christine, George, Leslie, George, Jonathan, Joshua, Rebecca, Erica, Angie and Barry. Excuse me. Again, we say, let us pray for them. For you come to us in them and you ask for our love. We give that now as, as we have named them, as we have held them in our hearts. We have promised in love and prayer let us never forget to do. So what we have promised in love and prayer, let us never forget to do. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Advent Lord, come ever nearer, come to rejuvenate our faith, come to fortify our social conscience, come to open wide our eyes of wonder, so that when the Saviour comes, he may steal into our hearts and find them ready. Even so, Lord Jesus, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. used to collect earlier um, I don't think it's any harm to say it again Almighty God give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armour of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead we may rise to the life of mortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Waiting his coming in glory, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, using whichever, um, whichever version is your preference. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for being with me today. I hope I've been on the screen. Um, I've not been able to see myself, which is no bad thing. Um, but I hope, I hope uh, everything has been okay on the screen and not kind of half a head or anything like that hope it's come through okay um, I hope you have a great day and uh, may God bless you this day we're going to listen again to a piece of music from the daily prayer for ordinary radicals this chief for ordinary radicals daily prayer uh, commonprayer.net uh, the app uh, swing low sweet chariot swing low May God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Help us to be a blessing to each other and our communities, that your ways may be known among us. Let all the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Amen. 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 See you soon. God bless.